his 30th birthday today. Is it a he or a her? <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, the name is Eloisa Bernardo. Happy birthday today, May 17, along with Manny Panera. Willie Pearson just missed a corner shot. Score still 22-21, and we're 20 seconds into the second quarter. Abby King playing outside. Philip says they're watching him. A pick set up by Etok Lobo, but Vadim Israel is immediately on Abby King. Etok finds himself in a jam. King fires, got it. Good ploy there by Etok Lobo. He drew two guards and left Abby King momentarily open. That's all he needed. Well, Lauchenko is in to the game for the, for the um, Gold Eagle team for Sadania. And also Javier came in for Crystal Floral for Fabiosa. Philip says are working at low post, and the ball goes off the floor. Last touch by Gold Eagle. By Cristobal will inbound from the baseline. Good defense by Rabanis on that play. Gold Eagle is in the driver's seat now, 23-22, and another contact whistle blows. This time addressed to Eto Klopo, his second personal and the very first team foul for Gold Eagle in this quarter. Still an immaculate slate for Crispa. Here's Padim Israel trying to shake off Bibo Ravanes, gets it into, tried to get it into Philip Cesar anyway, inside heavy traffic, and that's what happened. Good help defense by the Gold Eagle team as Bonate tapped it away to one of his teammates. Illegal screen called on Lobo, that's going to be his third foul, so he's in foul trouble now. Likewise, a second team foul for Gold Eagle. Ravanis applying a full court pressure defense on the ball carrier of Crispa. They're trying to prevent those fast breaks of the Redmanizers. Pearson goes up for a jumper and misses. Israel keeps it alive for the Redmanizers. His own shot is deflected. It goes out of bounds. No foul, but they will keep the basketball. And this is a swarming defense that the Gold Eagle team is playing. They're trying to double up every time somebody posts up down low. That's right. It's a beautiful classical study in two defensive teams taking on each other. Beautiful shot there by Philip Cesar. Well, it's hard to defense that. Philip just turned around in the Gold Eagle player's face and knocked down the 10-foot jump shot. So now the shoe is on the other foot. Crispa with the upper hand at 24-23. One and a half minutes gone by in the second quarter. Etok Lobo guarded by Padim Israel. He escapes Israel and immediately draws a foul from wow. Willie Pearson. That's only his first personal. Bibo Ravan is inbounding. We've got a crowd of about uh, 7,000 people here at the Coliseum. Fair crowd, considering that's it's a weekday uh, affair. Here's Israel sprinting down court, pulling up, giving it to Philip Cesar. He puts it up. Pearson had the last touch on the leather. Yes, Pearson could not save the ball. It's going to be go over to the Gold Eagle team. The Gold Eagle team is really setting their plays up far out from the basket. They have to get a little bit closer. Offensive foul is called on Bonate. He's asking the referee, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy Bonota grabs the opportunity to pull out by Cristobal and Atuico. Good steal there by... <laughs> Turnaround is no good. Intimidated by the sight of three crisp Redmanizers. And oh, Ravanis come through. Yes, good hustle by Ravanis on the play. Saved the ball, came back, got the offensive rebound, made the jump shot over three crisp floral players. Swarming defense being displayed on both ends of the court, uh, resulting in a lot of calls, a lot of violations, a lot of fouls. That last one was taking steps. Yes, by Israel. He walked as he was on his way to the basket. A quarterbacking now for the blue shirts of Gold Eagle are Bibo Rabanes and Bokelochenko. Prince Valiant himself. Oh! Abi King positioned himself beautifully for that great assist from Bokelochenko, and it's 27 24, three point lead for Gold Eagle. Ateco versus Bokelochenko. That's a more even matchup now. Cesar tries to get in. Co oh! <laughs> Unmindful of the heavy traffic inside, he just finger rolled it into the hoop. There's a lot of good passing going on here as the players are really looking for their teammates. That's going to be off of the leg of Abe King that time as he dribbled off of his knee. That's going to be a turnover for the CRISPR team. This is a resurgent Gold Eagle squad we're watching tonight. Coming off a skein of four losses. They seem to be out for blood tonight. They're up by one, 27-26. And again, the referee's whistle interrupts the action. Lauchenko wow, was the culprit that time. Only his first personal and Joey Lissaga is immediately tapped by Nat Kanson to replace somebody at the first or next occasion of a dead ball. Oh, Atoiko found himself in too deep, but he managed to stretch his way all the way to the iron just the same. And Atoiko is squirming his, pa his way to the basket. He's... Seems to be too slick for Lauchenko's defense. That's right. Uh, Atoiko is showing us something, a side to him that we seldom see, and that is Atoiko at short 
line that's or gonna, point blank range. That's going to be an offensive foul on Altenko. They say that he warded off or he hooked the man as he tried to go to the bas to the basketball hoop that time. And he also says, who, me? <laughs> yes. Joe, maybe we can give out a who, me award. We always give out the Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> Best player of the game. How about a who, me? That who, would be nice. Who, me award. Yeah. Yes, concomitant with uh, an acting award. All right, here is Willie Pearson. He tries his own barreling drive. Instead, got a foul. So he'll have to get his two points the hard way. Bokilochenko got his third foul and the 16th foul for Gold Eagle. Just one short of the limit. Crisp, on the other hand, has held its fouls down to only one. Willie Pearson bore May 3rd, 1957 in San Francisco, California. He plays guard for the team, stands 6'2", 170 pounds, and he's married to a Filipina whose name is Tess Tupaz. He played for Arellano University, La Salle, uh, Charminad University in Hawaii. 30-27, three-point lead for the Red Bonizers. 8.25 left before the lemon time break. And Noli Bonate working off Jimmy Javier. A good steal by Padim Israel. He has to control it in the backcourt. And here's Atoiko against Joey Loizaga. A near steal by Joey Loizaga. And a foul by Joey as he tried to steal a second time from Atoy. Yes, great hustle by Joey Loizaga that time. But... He committed a foul in the process. It's going to be Christopher Floro's ball. Well, more significant than his second foul is the fact that that foul put Gold Eagle into team foul trouble. We still have eight minutes and 13 seconds left in the second quarter. This is going to be a mighty slow uh, second quarter. Every foul of Gold Eagle from here on in will be interrupted by a penalty situation. That is offensive or loose ball. King with a fadeaway inside the paint. No good. Cesar got the ball, slipping out of his hands. We're going to get two foul shots. Ravanis is called for a reach-in foul that time. That's his second foul. That's what I mean. This game is going to drag on account of the team foul trouble that Gold Eagle found itself so early in this second quarter. Philip Cesar. And it's not just the CRISPR team tonight. Both teams are really, really on the rest. Philip Cesar, his birth date is December 1st, 1952. That makes him 31 years old. 6'2", 178, already a growing institution in Philippine basketball. His wife, as everybody knows, is the very beauteous April Sanidad. He has played for Jose Rizal College. I remember that very well. We used to cover him in the NCAA. 32-27, a five-point lead for the Red Monizers. Eight minutes left in the second half, or rather second quarter. Atoiko picking up his third foul. Yes, I think Coach Tommy Minotov will probably make a move now and bring Bob Cristobal into the game. Cole was called for a blocking foul. All right, the Sundance Kid goes out for Bob Cristobal. Ravanis trying to get it over to Abby King. <laughs> Give and go play resulted in a foul by Mike Ristoval who slammed his palm hard on the backrest of the board. That's his second personal. Yes, he was not too happy with that call. But Ravanis <laughs> will get two foul shots as the referees say that he was fouled. Biboy Ravanis, a Cebuano, born January 24, 1959. Gwendolyn Carter is the name of his spouse. He has played for the Cebu Central Colleges and San Miguel Corporation. He has never played for an international team. Cristobal gets it over to Willie Pierce, and if he missed that one, then he'd probably bang his head on the wall. That was a good fast break run by the Crystal Floral team that time as Cristobal passed the ball back to Pearson for the layup. 34-27, seven-point mark up here for the Red Bonizers, looking to tie uh, the Great Taste Coffee Makers for the lead in the overall standings. Willie Pearson picks up the garbage. Here is... Cristobal getting it back to Pearson. Let's see what he does with the ball. He snaps it up of a fadeaway, and it's a trifle short. The ball getting away from the butterfingers of Joey Loizaga. Yeah, it's good hustle by Joey Loizaga, though. He was there for the rebound. The ball just slipped out of his hand. That was a good catch by Willie Pearson on the pass from Cristobal. It was behind him, but he still was able to catch it. That's right. I didn't think he could pull it off. In any event, Crispo one more time around the block for them. Oh, good steal by Joey Loizaga. This guy is a born hustler. Here's Bokilochenko, hounded by Willie Pearson. Bebo Ravanis setting up a pick. He gets it from Bokio. Raceline drive by Ravanis. Trying to outsmart two defenders. Getting a foul from one of them. Philip yes. Cesar. I think it's going to be on Pearson this time. Is it Pearson? Yes, Pearson slapped him up against the arm that time. That's the second personal for Willie Pearson. And look at this. In just a matter of two minutes, uh, Crispa picked up four fouls to up their total so far to five. Uh, Jimmy Javier is replaced by Abid Gudabin, who's head of 
34-28. Two for two from the line by Bibo Devanis. It's a five-point lead for Crispa. It was a sluggish start for the Red Bonizers with the Gold Eagle pressing them basket for basket until they decided to come up with that 7-0 burst. Now their lead is down to five. Cesar, balloon pass to Pearson. Off Lauchenko, swoosh. Miss Lauchenko is a little bit smaller than Pearson. Pearson wanted to post him up that time, turned around for the 12-foot jump shot. Six points now for Willie Pearson. Mike Ristovel is hounding Lauchenko no end, acting like his own shadow. Look at him following Pearson, and I bet he's going to do that even all the way to the men's room. King disengaging. Pearson getting a slice of the leather and getting a foul. And Ravonis is going to get his third foul this time as he tried to smack the ball away from Pearson. Third personal for b -boy Ravonis and Willie Pearson. A rookie with a CRISPR squad. A prized acquisition, actually, of Tommy Monotok. Spent many years in the amateur ranks before he decided to turn pro. And he's in a situation where if he was on any other PBA team, probably other than great taste, he would be starting and playing a great deal of time. So he has to be very patient in his play. That's true. He has a lot of superstars ahead of him. Well, that's the price you have to pay for joining a power-laden cast like Crispa. I think the same holds true for great taste. Loisaga gives it over to Abbe King. Oh, look at that squeeze play by Loisaga. It was blocked and he was caught for traveling. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good call there by the ref. Well, you have to let the ball hit the floor that time. He just caught it on the right out of the air and tried to put it back up. So it's 38-29, a nine-point advantage for Crispa. We're exactly midstream in the second quarter. Cristobal saw daylight. He was completely open. He missed the opportunity. Pearson keeps it alive for the Redmanizers. Gidabin will have his turn inside the paint. Banks it off the glass and misses. Abe King fighting tooth and nail for the rebound. Willie Pearson getting into the punch. Cristobal missing the shot. Great hustle by the CRISPR team that time, especially Philip Cesar. You don't see the little things in the box scores, but Cesar was the one that kept that ball alive from the beginning. You bet. 40-29, 11-point lead for the Red Bonizers. Five and a half minutes left before the lemon time break. Lateral pass to Anthony Dasalia, who very surreptitiously went, came into the game. Oh, mid-air collision between Abbe King and Mike Ristobal. Cesar against Dasalia. Bullseye plus a foul. Yes, the Sally is going to get that foul, but what about the collision down here? <laughs> right. That was like two planes hitting each other. We've got a timeout. We shall return. Five minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. It'll be a penalty situation. Philip says I will be taking two shots. You know, if you're watching this with some friends, why don't you chip in and get yourselves a bottle of... And the player special whiskey. You'll enjoy the game a lot better, believe me. And this whiskey is not only for male winners, but also for female winners because, well, females can also enjoy Andy player whiskey by um, making it uh, the base for a punch. Ah, you didn't know that uh, Andy player whiskey makes a good base for a punch. Well, it does. Andy player special whiskey. And we've got a foul. Called on. Let's see who. Philip. Only his first personal. But already the 16th foul for Crispa with a good 4 minutes and 58 left in the second quarter. Loisaga tried to get it over to Abe King. He succeeded. Jump shot on the run by Abe. Offline. Loisaga keeps it alive. Snappily puts it up. Got it. This guy's a lot of hustle. When he misses, he misses very badly. But he makes it. He makes it in the most difficult of situations. <laughs> well, that time, Adriel put the ball down before he had really had control. Loisaga stripped him and made the jump shot. Yeah, the referee has his choice this time. Wow, He's going to call a foul on Desaya. It's going to be the ball outside Stop for Crispa. No, they're in the penalty. They get to shoot two foul shots. Well, it appears and is on the line. And if you'd like to get to know more about Hector Kalma of Northern Consolidated, then stay tuned for our Andy Player winner's profile coming to you right after this live telecast. Yes. Winner's Profile brought to you by Andy Player Special Whiskey. The real whiskey for real winners. There's a real winner right there on the line. Willie Pearson got in his first charity. Well, Bernie Fabioso has reported in for Adriel, and Sedania has come in for... Lois, not Lois Aga. He's coming for Ravinas. Two for two from the line by Willie Pearson for his 10th point for the evening. A 45-31 count. A 14-point bulge by the CRISPR Redbonizers. Four and a half minutes left in the second quarter. 
Last year's Grand Slam champions threatening to blow this game wide open right in the second quarter, but uh, there are still no uh, definite signs towards that. Well, that puts the Christopher Floral team over the limit. They now have 17 fouls. The foul was on Gudaba, and that's going to be his third. So he comes out of the game for Villamin. Yoya Villamin, he did a great job on Abby King while he was there. But right now it's Philip Cesar assigned to King. Joel Saga against Willie Pearson. Abby King now. Saldana Tabriki. Here's Anthony Dasalia. Harass no end by Mike Ristobal. A pass intended for Noli Banate. Draws a foul from Yuri Villamin who stepped into the picture. That's his second personal. Noli Banate will now go to the line for two foul shots because, like you said, they are in a penalty. So he'll get two. But before those charities, we've got a timeout. We shall return. Noli Bonatti just bungled his first charity to score on change at 45-31. I'm Joe Cantata and I'm doing this game. It indeed is a pleasure working with a man who's probably regarded as the finest import uh, seen in the Philippine hard courts, Norman Black. Well, a lot of CRISPR fans would argue with that, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> they, might, they might go for Billy Ray Bates. Well, you want to ask me my personal opinion, I'd still go for you, man. All right, we've got a foul wow. on the other end of the floor. Cristobal readily acknowledges it, and that's his third personal. 45-32 is the count. Three minutes and 59 seconds left before halftime. And by Cristobal is replaced by Freddy Obalde. Back line of Gold Eagle, uh, composed of Marty Saldana and Joe Loisaga. Bernie Fabiosa is on Saldana. Dasalia is watched by Philip Cesar. Loisaga trying to set up a pick here. Dasalia sagging out a bit and taking a shot from 18. Got it. Good jump shot by Dasalia that time. He had nothing else to do with the ball, so he shot it. When in doubt, shoot. Exactly. 45 34. Very sound philosophy. 11 point lead for the Red Benizers. The Gold Eagle Beermen are not out of this game, not by a long shot. Baseline drive by, by uh, Freddy Ubaldi. Rather, Fabiosa. <laughs> Fabiosa. Yes, he, just, awry. he just lost the ball. You notice that Loizaga has been in the game for almost the entire game. Uh, not Gansson seems to have a lot of faith in this young man. Yes, he has a lot of confidence in him, yes. Saldana taking a shot of Bertie Fabiosa. The ball landing right into the hands of Loisaga. He got it over to Bonate. He didn't expect a pass, but he very gamely took it and snapped off the shot. Yes, he knew what to do with the ball when he got it. And Bonate is playing one of his better games this year. Yes, you can say that. Ten times over. 45-36. Crisp lead down to a single digit. Nine points. Mm, great move by Cesar that time. He just... Drove in there like he was a swan. He glided to the hoop and laid it in with the finger roll. This man, Philip says, there is out for blood tonight. And when he has that attitude, the opposition had better watch out. Uh, the Salia. <laughs> Another situation where he found himself undecided, so he took the shot. The ball went in. But is it counted? Yes, it is. And now he's in for a grand slam. Cesar picked up his second foul. Both teams are over the limit. We have two minutes and 35 seconds left in the first half. Anthony de Salia easily would pass for a matinee idol if you were to meet him on the street. Very good looking fellow, born May 5th, 1956. Standing six feet three and a half, he's very much single and he is a native born, honest to goodness Manilan. Well, Cesar did not like the idea that de Salia made that foul shot, so he knocked it back through the hoop. 47-39. <laughs> Just an eight point lead for the Red Manizers. Obalde shook himself loose from Marta Saldana but missed the shot. Noli Bonatti came down with a rebound and here's Joey Loizaga. Willie Pearson trying to stay with Loizaga. They finally got it down to Loizaga making his move all the way to the iron. Blocked beautifully by Philip Cesar. There's the baseball pitch to Fabiosa. Dasalia coming into the picture, out sprinting Bernie Fabiosa. Good hustle by Anthony Dasalia that time. It just happened that the ball bounced high. And of course, Tony Dasalia is much taller than Bernie Fabiosa, so he was able to reach it before Fabiosa could. Here's another rookie reporting for duty, Dante Gonzalgo. Luisaga checking out. And that will put him at the guard position. He normally plays the forward position. Well, let's see how he fits into that role. Philip Cesar in the right quarter court. Uh, a very tight court and erected around that lane by the blue shirts. Uh, this is going to force the Christopher Edmonizers to an outside shot or that baseline drive by Freddy Obaldi, which drew a foul. Well, he won't get the um, basket. It wasn't in, in the act of shooting, but he will get the two foul shots because they are over the limit. Well, the Edmonizers are simply going on fishing expeditions, and it's been working marvelously for them so far. Vadim Israel is waiting in the wings to replace somebody in the crystal lineup, and he's be, uh, he'll be coming in for Willie Pearson. Freddie Ubalde 
Who isn't familiar with this name? At least every basketball fan throughout the archipelago must be familiar with his one-time MVP. He started out with the Mapua team. That's when he first gained his first MVP in the NCAA back in the late 60s. All right. He's married, by the way, to Cynthia Ubalde. Gonzalo. On the Gold Eagle end of the court, Saldana working off Bernie Fabiosa. Villamin. Oh, that was a traveling error. Forcing yeah. a turnover. That was a good pick and roll that time as Gonzalo rolled to the hoop. And Marty Sedania gave him the pass, but Cesago could not handle the pass, and he ended up traveling. Crispa up by 10, 49-39. Time down to a minute and 26 in the first half. Freddy Ubalde, watched by Dante Gonzalo. <laughs> Philip Cesar put it up right over the tall head of Dolly Bonatti. <laughs> and Cesar has made some tough shots tonight. He's really playing at the top of this game. 11 points now for Philip. At high post, you've got Anthony DeSalia passing off to Saldana. Too much muscle behind the shot. Philip Cesar saves it from going out of bounds. And here is Bernie Fabiosa. Let's see what he does. There are four Gold Eagles down on defense right away. Philip Cesar bangs it in off the glass. Tripped there by Dante Gonzalo accidentally. And they're still on the floor. Oh, great move by Saldana. Going behind the back on the dribble. And he lays it up. He got away from Bernie Fabiosa that time by putting the ball behind his back. Well, the Pingui Pengson calls him the mighty might. There's another M M sobriquet you could give him. That's Miracle Man. He pulls up miracles every day. 53-41. Vila Ming went to the hoop that time. He got fouled by Panair. He'll have two foul shots. And while Vila Ming is taking two foul shots, we'd like to pause for a few seconds here to allow our provincial stations to identify themselves. Two for two from the line by Yoyo Villamin, and it's another 14-point advantage for the Red Bonizers. 30 seconds left for Gold Eagle. Here's Anthony de Salia making his move off Israel. Takes a tumble of Yoyo Villamin, and Yoyo immediately picks him up. I thought for a moment there de Salia was going to blow his stack, but the grinning face of Yoyo Villamin immediately cooled him down. Well, one thing you notice about Desalia, when you have to worry about him losing his temper is when he starts smiling. <laughs> <laughs> is that a fact now? Yes, if he's, if he's looking mean, then he'll leave you alone. But if he starts smiling, watch out. All right, this guy is lean, but he can be mean. Well, if you've got a yen for Spanish cooking, come and visit Doña Nena Spanish Cuisine Restaurant, where a sumptuous feast of Spanish delicacies make your mouth water like nothing. Doña Nena's Restaurant, conveniently located along Anza Street, corner Macari Avenue. 24 seconds left. The score, 55 for Crispa. Gold Eagle down by a dozen points. Fabiosa with Saldana sticking to him. He looks at the clock. It says 12 seconds. They're going to take the final shot and have the final say in this first half. But before anything can happen, the whistle blows. Marty Saldana elected to foul instead of letting the Redmanizers have an easy basket. And the referees are doing a good job of keeping their ears closed as the Gold Eagle bench is really, really coming down hard on them. <laughs> right. Bernie Fabiosa. Nine points across his name now. And it's a 13-point lead for Crispa. Bigger's dozen, if you want to call it that. 4.8 seconds left before the lemon time break. And Fabiosa missing, but it was a blessing in disguise. Tipped in by Villamin. So it's 58-43 as both clubs repair to their respective locker rooms for heart-to-heart -heart sessions with their respective coaches. A 15-point lead for the high-flying Crispa Redmanizers. We'll have the breakdown of those scores and then some right after this cluster of reminders.